dear or thank you for listening to us, actually to me. Uh, I'm speaking here on the behalf of Laurent Gauthier and myself. Laurent is a professor at the University of Burgundy in German studies, German linguistics, and I am now a PhD uh, in uh, German linguistics. Uh, we're deeply sorry for not being here live, uh, but as we mentioned earlier, <coughs> uh, Prof. Gauthier um, is uh, actually on a meeting and uh, I haven't so much time now because I have started a position, a new position at the university. Uh, but we wanted to uh, present our work uh, to you and we, uh, we wanted to show you uh, some of our thoughts. So um, I'm beginning right now with uh, this presentation. Uh, the, the title of the, the article is uh, The Digital Transnational Linguistic Landscape of Wine Discourses, uh, Comparative Discourse Analysis of Pre-European Wine Regions. The three regions are the French uh, in, are in France and in Germany. In France we have the, uh, road, uh, the wine road in Burgundy, La Route des Grands Crus. In Alsace we have the Route des Vins, the wine road, and we have uh, the German wine road in uh, uh, Renanie Palatinate. So I will give you some, some contextual elements for this research project. Uh, first, we see wine as a biocultural project. It means that um, that wine links uh, what comes from the ground and from and from the sky. So we have the grape, we have the weather, we have the rain, and so on. Um, so it links uh, what comes from the ground um, to what comes from humans, uh, meaning traditions, uh, know-how, and so on. And by saying that, we think that wine is part is a part, a symbol, an artifact of uh, local and or regional identity in Europe. Second, uh, wine is a cultural product which brings pe people together. Um, and so this is a basic assumption, but uh, we had a great example of, of this uh, when we see uh, the protests, protests against the closure of bars and restaurants across Europe, uh, especially in France. Third, wine is also a transnational cultural product. Uh, it means that uh, when we speak about uh, wine, everybody in Europe and maybe uh, in the world uh, know what wine is. Um, and as a basic example, we would take uh, the inno tourism, so the tourism tourism about wine, uh, which is an international marketing concept and strategy to attract new clients and to promote uh, wine, specific wines and, um, and some uh, wine regions. In this context, uh, we would like to, oh, we have asked ourselves uh, if wine is a local and specific cultural product, or if it um, if it has a an European status, and and we would like to uh, answer this question um, in in our article and uh, and with this presentation we would like to uh, propose some elements. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, give some words uh, on the method and the scope of the study. So the we we would like to take the the idea of linguistics landscape and uh, we will use it as a analytical tool within a social and cognitive discourse analysis. So we will work on Instagram posts uh, that we will uh, retrieve and collect through the use of uh, specific hashtags like wine, wine roads, uh, route des vins, Weinstrasse, um, and so on. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, we will focus on three wine regions, Burgundy, Alsace, and uh, Rhine and Palatine in Germany. Now I'm, I'd like to speak about the, the theoretical framework. Um, we use the cognitive discourse semantics, uh, which comes from the, the original uh, discourse semantics, but from the German framework. So I go back to what, what discourse is. Um, discourse is, after Foucault, um, a cognitive, um, a historical and cognitive um, notion, concept, uh, or structure, 
and this structure is uh, three dimensional we have one dimension uh, dedicated to social components so social components it could be um, uh, actually uh, a politeness or uh, social rules we have uh, a lingu linguistic di um, dim dimension like words and knowledge about uh, sentences and uh, uh, syntactic uh, structures and we have a epistemic uh, component uh, about uh, know-how and how to do things so d so this is the, the roots of the of the notion um, and the idea of the cognitive discourse semantics is to unify um, this uh, discourse analysis uh, from Foucault with a uh, cognitive settings uh, cogn cognitive semantics um, framework and especially with the notion of frames what a frame is is a, um, a hyperstructure a cognitive structure of knowledge and so so we can imagine that we have a big frame a big knowledge structure and inside this frame we have uh, a smaller component so knowledge units and these knowledge units are frame frame elements so we could have uh, a, a frame which could be the discourse and then we could have uh, social linguistic epistemic components which could be frame elements uh, with a hierarchy and this is actually the idea of the cognitive discourse semantics but before uh, coming to this uh, framework to this uh, theoretical uh, model uh, I have to, sp to precise that uh, th the notion of discourse is not enough it is um, it works as itself but it's not enough for us as linguists and I'd like to uh, come back to the idea of Busse and Teuber uh, 94 who says who says who said sorry that um, uh, following Foucault himself that discourse does not exist as it is it it's only an analytical construction uh, we can we cannot see it we cannot touch it let alone represent it but um, we can have a feeling of discourse, we can have a sense of discourse um, and that's particular, particularly true when we analyze texts so uh, Busset and Teubert uh, explain us that, that um, if we um, if we analyze texts then we can have this feeling so they, they put the idea of virtual corpus which could be the corpus um, the best corpus that we could we could produce if we had if we have uh, unlimited resources, uh, and through this uh, these texts, texts we could uh, access discourse. So we we do not have a virtual corpus. What we have is a real corpus, so with real text that we have collected, and if the real corpus is uh, representative of the virtual corpus, then the textual analysis could uh, uh, lead us to the discourse and to its component so the, the, the idea is uh, first a textual linguistics uh, ID and then from text we go to uh, we go to discourse um, we, we do accept uh, this ID um, we follow it uh, but we go also beyond uh, by accepting the ID by accepting the idea that a uh, discourse is a complex system of knowledge units um, which are frame elements so discourse is actually a discourse frame and in within this discourse frame we have a conceptual core for example wine then we have a frame elements like uh, grape var variety or winery and uh, for these concepts we can go further and have sub concept and sub sub concepts so we could have grape variety then pinot and then pinot noir for example for uh, red wine from burgundy um, if we have winery we could have winery and then winemakers uh, winemaker as uh, as um, sub frame but uh, the idea is uh, basically the same so we go through a textual analysis um, of our corpus and then we reconstruct uh, every frame element and um, 
the predicative structure of this uh, of this um, hierarchy of uh, knowledge for units. So I ha uh, I propose you a, a short analysis just to show you how it works because. Um, uh, we, we didn't have time enough to, to prepare a uh, concrete analysis with uh, uh, statistical uh, results. So I, I, will, I will just show you uh, some um, basic aspects of, um, of the, the, the analysis and, and, and then I will conclude because I'm, I'm already at the 10 uh, minutes um, timeline. So um, here are two examples, one in French, one in German actually in, in English but in a German region and we can see through the, um, the hashtag chain that uh, both concept uh, Weinstrasse and Route des Vins uh, are traits of the wine culture but also maybe as, as a techno operator because they are constitutive of, um, of uh, um, a, a higher structure of, of uh, wine components uh, like the region, the wine region, uh, like the um, uh, grape variety, um, uh, a specific proxies, uh, and so on. So we might think that uh, the, 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 the concept of uh, Route des Vins is here a part of uh, the wine culture underlying the speech production of uh, uh, in French uh, about wine. Uh, Route des Vins or and, and Weinstrasse uh, are also uh, concepts, concepts dedicating to a location. Um, that's not a surprise, but it's interesting because uh, we could have specific uh, locations like Pfalz and Weinberg, but we also have Weinstrasse, uh, just like uh, Weinstrasse was a, a, a point. It's not actually a point. It's a it's a, a, um, a zone. So the idea here is that um, Weinstrasse is conceptual conceptualized as a location, and s with this idea, um, we could say say that um, Weinstrasse is a um, is a place where the culture of wine is, is played uh, and expressed. Um, but that just uh, first ideas of, uh, that, we could, uh, uh, that we could find in our corpus. Um, and I, I'd like now to conclude because uh, I've spoken too much. Um, so just to, to finish. Um, the, the idea of a, a discursive analysis um, is, we think, uh, useful and fruitful because we have already some results. Uh, we, d we have to go further, but it works. Um, as, a as a perspective, we thought that we could integrate uh, the idea of constructions as function from pairings after Goldberg, uh, 95, 2006, and 2019. Uh, so we could have the our discourse frame with our frame elements, and then we could have constrictions. So it would be um, for us better in this further development, which goes far beyond uh, the scope of this article and presentation. Um, but that it could allow us to better study the conversion of a, con of a concept into a sequence of signs, or a sequence of words, or a sequence of, for example, picture elements. So it could be very useful. Um, and, and I, I prefer not to mention the socioeconomic interest of the of this study because it's it's um, not really relevant now. Um, I thank you for uh, for listening to us, uh, so to me and and Prof Gauthier, and uh, we we would be really happy if you have some comments and uh, ideas, remarks for us. Thank you very much.